Now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Just finished my live stream, and I made a promise to all the live stream viewers that today was the day I would try and get this little Honda CT110 at least running. <sighs> so much work to do. Anyway, I thought you'd like to join me on this little adventure. This bike has been stood for many, many, many years. So we're going to need to work out what needs to be done to get it to come back to life, at least to run for us. And that's what this video is all about. <laughs> Use. So we've got lots and lots of checks to do. We don't even know if the engine's seized. If it's seized up, then really there's going to be an engine strip to sort that out, at least a top end rebuild. There could have been water getting in through the intake system. It could have sat inside the cylinder and, and basically rusted the piston rings to the bore. Hence, it, would, it won't turn over. We don't know that yet. So the first thing to do is grab all of the kickstarts and see if we can turn that machine over. Uh, let's remove the spark plug to do that and we can put a little drop of oil down the cylinder as well just to help things along the way a little bit. Here we go. Now on the CT110, it's got a super easy to access spark plug just in case you've got to replace it at the side of the road. Who knows? These bikes are well known in New Zealand for being the infamous pussy bike for many, many years. And I'm not sure whether this was used as a pussy bike or not. I think it will have done. Right, spark plug. I have no service manual for this bike at this point in time. I only picked it up last week. Jeez. So we've got a D7EA spark plug in there at the moment. I don't know if that's the correct spark plug or not. Obviously NGK, top quality. Right. Let's chuck a bit of oil down there. And then we'll try the old kickstart. Give it a push down and see if that piston will move up and down. I don't know. Right. Here goes. Give it a squirt. There we are. One squirt's enough. Okay, now's the time. Is it gonna move? Oh yes, look at that. That sounds pretty good. Alright, let's we'll work a bit of oil around the cylinder. That's great news. The kickstart assembly feels to be in good condition too. There's no broken teeth in there by the way. Excellent. Okay, well, next job. Let's just see if we've got any oil in the engine. We don't want it to start up with no engine oil. That would be sacrilege. <laughs> we've got oil dripping out of the exhaust port. That's good news. Right. Get a rag. Okay, we'll get that clean off. The bike's pretty level on the hoist, so... Should give us a relative indication of how much oil's in there. Good enough for this particular process anyway. Now, when you're checking the oil on Hondas, first of all, make sure the O-ring's all the way back up to the dipstick, top of the dipstick. Now, you just dip it in. You don't screw it back in again. Right. <laughs> we have no oil on the dipstick. Okay, we're going to need to top that up. Hopefully, I'm not wasting the oil. Right, here goes. No idea how much is needed to get back on the dipstick. It's completely off the dipstick, which might indicate she's a bit of an oil burner. Or, I could have put too much in. I don't know. Too much what harm for an initial start up there. Oh, look at that. We're about two millimeters from the top. That will do just fine for this 
particular job. So if it does run, I'll get it running, warm the whole thing up, and then change the oil anyway. Fantastic news. The engine isn't seized up. Yes, it's it was critically low on engine oil. We put about half a litre of oil in to get it back into the hatchings area on the dipstick. These things probably only hold just over a litre anyway, so... At least it had some oil in it, but nowhere near enough. That might indicate that the engine burns oil, the rings are badly worn, or the valve stem oil seals have, 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 you know, have failed, and there's oil getting into the combustion chamber. We don't know. But we could have a quick look at the spark plug. Hang on. Now, the spark plug tells us all sorts of stuff. If we look at the end of the spark plug there, look, that would indicate it's had a nice, clean burn. It's a nice sort of brown tan color that tells us it doesn't burn oil so maybe it has an oil leak that's how the oils disappeared from the engine casings okay now if we turn the ignition on with the spark plug out pop the spark plug back into the the ht lead cap and we'll see if we get a spark if we get a spark things are really promising right said fred this is where andy gets a shock so make sure the ignition is turned on now, before we stick the old ignition key in, because it's been stuck for so long, I want to put some, uh, some graphite into the ignition switch itself. So I'm going to use the Forch S411 Black Magic. This is brilliant for ignition switches. There we go. That should be enough. Right, fingers crossed this switch turns. Keys in. On. Excellent. Right, let's make sure it's got a good good grounding. There we go, look. Okay, look for a spark for me while I crank it over. This is usually where I get a shock. Oh, yes. That is fantastic news. Good job, Honda. Well done. Right, we'll pop that back in. And then... We'll drain the float ball on the cab. In fact, we've got to find the cab first. We can drain the float ball and I'll put some fresh fuel in the tank. Right, now, I always start that with right or now or both, don't I? It's just the way I am. I'm going to put a little bit of copper paste on the threads. And now, I know some people say, Yeah, you don't do that, that's terrible. You change the torque setting when you come to torque the plug up. But hey, come on. This is a knackered old spark plug. We need a new one. I'm pretty sure I don't have one. In fact, should we have a look? Let's go have a look, see if we've got a new plug. We might have a new one. Now, what was it? D7EA. Okay. D7EA. We'll stick you on there, look. What have we got here? Ah, D8EA. Okay. That will work for this job. DR8EA. No. DR8. Oh, hell, we've got loads of those. Wow. Uh, CPR78, CR8E. Okay, well, in that case, oh, what have we got down here? Let's have a look. C6HSA. That sounds like a very posh plug. CR9E. DR8EA. That's the same as. Oh, that's a resistor plug. Okay, DCP R8E, CR6HC, okay, no, so the last one, yeah, no, what's that one? That's definitely not this, is it? What's that? CR6HSA. Okay, we don't have the right heat range plug, but we do have a plug that will fit. So instead of a D7EA, just for temporary, just for today to start it up, and it won't be running for very long, so it shouldn't cause a problem. We've got D8EA, same spark plugs actually as the Honda CB750, but just one heat range difference. So that physically will fit, just a different heat range, but physically the same plug. Excellent. Right, let's go and pop that new plug in. We'll keep the old one though, just in case. Okay, new plug. <laughs> I am still going to put some copper paste on because that's who I am and what I do. 
you can tell me why in the comments why I shouldn't do that if you like very important with spark plugs not to drop them they don't like being dropped and for memory be very very careful putting these plugs in the last thing you want to do is cross thread because they're only an aluminium thread in the head it came out very very easily it doesn't want to go in quite so easily come on mr plug you can do it what's going on why do you not want to go in the threads look pretty good but the threads look very good Just want to start. What's the old plug like? You know, sometimes you wish you hadn't taken something out, <laughs> but we have to do. Chances are, with these things, sometimes somebody has munched the threads a little bit. Let me give a torch and take a look. Right, so we've got torch on camera. Doesn't look bad, does it? They look fine. I just need to be very careful getting that plug back in again. I can't see any reasons why it wouldn't. Maybe we'll give it a bit of a clean. There's a bit of carbon buildup on the outside. Right, well, what I don't want to do is flush a lot of the dirt into the cylinder. So I'm just going to ah, screwdriver. Be good. Here we go. So I'm just going to just scrape around the outside a little bit with a rag and a screwdriver. Not sure if that's going to make any difference or not. We'll have to find out. Right, where's the new plug again? Okay. Hmm. I've taken it back out. It just didn't feel right. Uh, maybe I'm just a bit too far forward. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit. There we go. Nothing wrong with the threads. Just me, basically. So be super careful. It's worth taking your time. That could easily have got cross-threaded. These threads feel really good. It felt fine coming out of the old plug. So another reason why I was questioning what was going on, really. Right, so we won't go mad. I just want to compress that washer. There we go. Usually about half to three quarters of a turn is enough. And then we'll stick the cap back on. Okay, so we know we've got spark. We know that the rings have got a bit of oil on them now. We should have a reasonably good compression. Um, I don't want to kick it over now and draw in stale fuel with the cylinder. Now's the time to get round to the carburetor and take a look at that. We need to, at the very least, we need to drain out the old fuel from the carb float ball. But chances are it's going to be pretty furry in there. So we do well to take the carb off and have a look inside and see what's going on. Right, round to the other side of the bike. Now the carb is located here. It's actually really easy to get to. But if we remove this plastic shroud over the top, we can get to it a lot easier. So I'm going to pull that off first. So posi screws. Now, with this being a Japanese motorcycle, built in Japan, I can tell because it's got a J at the start of the VIN number, these will be JIS screws. So we're going to use the Vessel Impactor, which is a spe specifically a Japanese uh, industry standard screwdriver, which means it's got a very slightly different tip, so it should grip that screw a lot better and hopefully not chew it up. These were sent to me by uh, one of our viewers, actually, Simon Rawl from England. So again, thank you, Simon. Really, really appreciate that. Let's see if they do the job. Here we go. 
It shouldn't be over tight because they're only holding plastics on. Jeez, there we go. Look, that's one. Can't beat the Bionic Man sound effect, can you? Right, where's the other one? Ah, it's up there, look. Bear with me. There we go. Right. Oh, yeah, that was easy, that one. Super job. Right. To the other side. One more. Oh, that was easy. That was loose. Didn't even need the sound effect for that one. Okay, what else have we got? Now, the last one isn't a screw. It's actually a clamp that runs off what looks like one of the engine mountings. So, let's chuck on. It looks a bit corroded, so we'll stick a bit of the old magic ice on there from Fort, the S412. There we go. And it's a 17 millimeter nut. I don't like the way it's turning. Jeez. Oh, God, we got it. That was tight. Didn't need to be tight either, did it? Not really. It's only a piece of plastic. And of course, there's still the main engine mounting nut behind that. We'll stick a bit more on there for later on. Right, for assembly. Okay, we should be able to remove this cover now. Hopefully, he says. <laughs> Best take the key out. Okay, we should now be able to remove this, hopefully. Oh, that was a lot easier, wasn't it? Right, we'll stick that on the bench. And now, we've got full access to the carburetor. Wonderful. Okay, I think the next job is pull that off. And I want to have a look inside that float bowl. I could risk starting the bike just by draining the carb and putting some fresh fuel in it, but given the fact the bike's been stood for so long, I really want to have a look inside that carb. I have a sneaky suspicion that the float bowl's quite, you know, there's been a bit of corrosion in there uh, and build up a residue. So we, we really need to remove that before we go any further. Now, I need some long nose pliers. We've got a little pipe here to take off. And the fuel tap is incorporated into the float bowl. I have never seen that before. That's a brilliant idea. It's amazing what you learn when you're working on these old bikes. We didn't get the CT, well, to my knowledge, we didn't get the CT 110 in the UK. But it's a very, very popular bike, both in Australia and New Zealand. So it's pretty good. It's good to have a, there we go, look, that's that one. I'm just popping over there. Now, we've got a pretty crusty hose clamp on there. Let's see if we can get that undone. I might even get a wire brush on that, actually. Bear with me. Just see if we can get rid of some of the, some of the crustiness. Rather than drag it through the threads. This is the smallest wire brush I've got. It's only a brass one. It's not particularly aggressive, but it should help. spray right come on vessel you can do it it's a really good fit in the screw heads it's excellent definitely worth spending the money right oh look at that wow I actually wasn't expecting that at all I was expecting a bit of a fight to be honest right that's now loose we'll get that back now we've got two fuel lines here. One will be uh, from the reserve output of the fuel tank and one will be the normal. The last thing I want to do is get them mixed up. So I'm going to put some a mark on the top and on that one. So we don't get them the wrong way around and we stick it back on again. That would be bad. Almost there. There we go, that's one. I don't know how far back that stud goes. That little union, we'll keep going. There we are, right. And now, for this one. Don't want to damage the clips, because I won't have any more of these. And 
when you go and use great big hose clamps on there it's not it looks a bit naff doesn't it it's best to try and keep things original a little bit of spray might help a bit of silicon spray just to help it slide back a bit there we go Just trying to push it down my thumbnail at the same time, it's quite awkward. I'm just going to get one side and just massage it down. Good news is there's still plenty of springiness left in it. But a lot of these little fixtures get, get lost when bikes are rebuilt and they, people tend to use big hose clamps. You know, like you'd find on a, on a car. There we go. Okay, now next trick, little screwdriver. I'm just gonna ease that underneath. Chances are these pipes are gonna be quite perished, so it's usually the case with this kind of stuff. Oh, well, we've got some movement. There we go. Way. <laughs> okay. Oh, that smells really stale. Okay. Let me. Um, oh, I know what I can use. I can use the vessel screwdriver. Just plunk that in there, and that'll seal it up while I go and find a bolt. Mm, no smoking. Okay. Well, we're going to drain out the fuel anyway, so I've got a container just down there. Look. And the plan is to try and get this old fuel filter in the pipe and then we can drain it off <laughs> down the tube. That'll work when it can post it down there, that'll work. Okay, like I said, no smoking. I give it a good shove. <laughs> the joys of old bikes. Here we go. Right. Poor workshop. There we go. Right, let's have him down there. And that's going to start filling up our little container. Now, they only have a small tank on these things, so hopefully a five litre container should be big enough. I can't imagine it's full of fuel, surely. Right, everything is now covered in petrol. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. <laughs> Jared from Fort sent me a big blue roll of paper towel and to be honest Jared I've been attacking it the last few days so <laughs> I'll probably be coming around for some more soon. <laughs> Terrible. Okay so I can't really take the other one off until all the fuel's drained out but we can slacken off these bolts here. These are where, what connect the carburetor to the manifold but before we do that let's take the throttle slider out. That should be relatively easy. Right, where's the little brush? Let's just give it a bit, bit of a clean. I don't want to deliberately get dirt into the carb. These are really good. They're not over aggressive. They don't seem to harm rubber too much. These are from um, Eurobike. Where have got them from? I think they're made in Italy. They're not expensive. I'm going to get some more because they, they don't last forever, but they are really good. It does look like this bike's been used on a farm, given all the dirt on it, and the fact it's got knobbly tyres as well. I mean, look at it, there's no rust on the frame, it's in such good condition. It's a brilliant bike to do a restoration on. And I want to do the what we call the posty run here in New Zealand. They do a, there's a few people who collect these bikes do a run once a year with, with their CT110s and CT90 as well. Right, well that looks pretty good, nice and clean. We'll hang that up somewhere. There we go. Right, so that's that bit out of the way. Let's stick a bit of a bit of blue roll just in in there to stop us getting any dirt and stuff in that part of the car if we can help it. There we go. Okay, now we can undo those those two bolts. 
Okay, we're still rolling. We are still rolling. Excellent. Okay, that's one. And the outer one has the little bracket on. Now, I can't do the other one, can I? Because I need to take that last pipe off. Have we still got flow? I don't think so. Just bear with me a second. I need to find out. No, that's everything from that pipe. So we'll just disconnect that. Only got about a cup full out, which is good. We'll have them out of there. There we go. Now we can do the other pipe. There's my little screwdriver. This is the kind of stuff you have to do when the bike's being stuck for so long because it's not going to run. Chances are that it's not going to run at all. If it does run, it's going to run really badly. So you've got to replace the fuel. And I have got some new fuel outside and I can. So. So we can get behind there, look. There we go. Phew. Right, any fuel out of that one? No, not really. So that one, the top one must be reserved then, I think. And there was bugger all fuel in it. Excellent. Okay, so now <laughs> we've rubbed off the thingies. We'll stick that on there, look. It was that one, wasn't it? He says yes so now we can undo that other bolt and get the cab off the bike and get it on the bench and have a look that one's a bit of an awkward angle to be fair, so we can get in with that. Yes, there we go. Look, I think we're off. Definitely no smoking zone. Okay, I think we can leave that one where it is. Bring the carb out. And all that's left to do now is to get that that rubber taken off without damaging it. There we go. Right. Okay, we've got one last little drain pipe. Overflow pipe. Which will just ping off if we can. Where's my pliers? There we go. Can we get that? Yep, there we are. Get the seal broken. Perfect. Okay, one CT110 carburetor to the bench. Hang on a minute. Oh, that's fallen off, that's why. Ha! Huh. I was wondering why there was two O-rings. And it's alright, this is the heat the uh, the heat panel, just to stop the heat getting from the engine to the carb. So maybe we'll just pull that off. We'll pull that off. And we'll stick them on there. And hopefully it's not swollen too much. Right, to the bench. Geez, it absolutely stinks of stale petrol in this workshop. So it's a really good job that we replaced or drained out the old fuel. And I dread to think what we're going to find inside this carburetor. But there's only one thing we can do, and that's strip it down. At least remove the float ball and take a sneaky peek inside. Now, one little trick is to use a metal tray to disassemble the carbs. So if anything falls off that you don't notice... Well, it's not going to go far, otherwise it can fall on the floor. Also, 
the fuel that comes out will be caught in the tray and you might find that there's lots of water in it if there is there's chances are there's water in the fuel tank as well and that will need to be cleaned out okay well we've got here actually a little filter on the bottom of the fuel tap we could pull that off while we've still got purchase and we can have a little look and see how blocked up that filter is 17 mil spanner i think okay be very careful don't want to break anything because this is this is probably quite hard to get hold of a new one of these now and it's saying that they were still using these bikes up until a few years ago now they're all driving around in these little four-wheel rechargeable buggy things right yes we have got some crud is that going to come out it should do go find a little pick hang on so I'm thinking there's an o-ring in there to seal it get the o-ring out then we should be able to get the filter out there we are there's the o-ring way that was cool okay and now the filter is that going to come out it's got like a little a little holdy bit on the end to facilitate it coming out maybe it's not okay maybe we'll just leave that for now i'll get the brake cleaner i'll give it a bit of a spray oh look water definitely water in the fuel but not a lot right let's give that a little blast for now remember this is only an, an initial get running thing that's a bit cleaner that's a lot cleaner good job forge okay so what else have we got well we've got a lot of crud in here oh look at all that again let's see if we can spray that out it's coming up pretty well look at that awesome i hate putting things back in full of crud obviously we're here to clean it out that's the idea of doing what we're doing so one more blast excellent okay we'll stick that back on mr seal oh, oh, oh. pop him down there look it's all right my pick's not sharp it'll do the trick just nicely don't over tighten no need to go gorilla on these things there we go right now for the prize let's get that uh, float ball taken off in fact let's get some spray on there actually these can often be really tight and you can end up chewing the screws up so we'll just as soon as they're exposed we'll just put a little bit of spray on there whether it makes a difference or not I have no idea it should do right okay get a good purchase oh yes beautiful that's one let's see if we can get it, do it two out of two don't rush don't rush get your purchase make sure it's all the way in push down a bit and oh yes there we go super job it even came out with the driver that's one it's raining outside it's raining lots actually it's been mizzling and now it's raining lots two okay we have we're successful in getting both screws out there are only two screws holding this float ball on oh yes oh yes right oh, time for a close-up wow we've got some mess here haven't we look at the state of that all the uh, the idle jet and the main jet they're all pretty furry so let's get those floats taken out first of all and the car wasn't leaking so that's always a good sign so we'll get the little 
pivot out. Notice how I'm not using a hammer at this point in time, which is good because carburetors and hammers don't go together. Okay, so we've got the pivot, we've got the floats with just dangling underneath the float valve. Very important we keep that nice and clean and we don't damage that rubberized surface as well. So we'll just pop that over to one side for now, very gingerly on the bench. So we've got basically to the, the two jets, which we can pull out and I can clean those and I can clean all around here and I can clean the seat where the actual um, float valve seat is down there. Okay, and I've got all that crap to clean out as well. So you don't need to watch me clean stuff out, but you can watch me remove those, uh, those two jets. So we need a flat screwdriver and looks like an eight mil spanner and we can undo that separately as well. Okay, let's try the big one first. So we're just ideally taking the jet out first. There we go. Oh no, the whole thing's coming out. Okay, well, screw that back in. Let's see if we can hold it with a spanner. It's not an eight, it's a seven. Holy crap, have I got a seven mil spanner? Oh, I do, I thought I had. Right, we'll pop him over there. Is it going to fit? It is. It's about as good as it's going to get. And then we can crack off that jet because I want to clean them all individually. Now then, how the hell am I going to hold this together? Right. Here goes. Oh, yes. Look at that. I won't say professional, but, you know, it does the trick. Okay. Main jet. Now, they call this bit, well, there's lots of different names. This is the emulsion tube. If we look inside here, you'll see lots and lots of, oh, there should be lots and lots of little holes. Yes, there we are, look. And this helps with, oh, this is what causes the fuel to atomize as it leaves the float ball and goes into the Venturi. The Venturi is that bit down there. So that needs a good clean up. We need to make sure all, the, all those holes are clear. Right, lastly, the idle jet. Here it goes. Wow, they came out really well, actually. It doesn't look like it's been mutilated, this bike. It's been looked after, and if anybody has been in here, there we are, look, you see we've got some more, another little mini emulsion tube on the end of there as well. There we go. So that all needs to be cleaned up. And that little brass wire brush that I have would be ideal for that. And that, that's all one piece. Uh, is it all one piece? Usually is. Hang on, let me get my brush. Yes, I think that's all one piece. Possibly. It is. It is all one piece. I can see a line though. What's going on there? Nah. That's all one piece, I'm sure of it. Well, we'll clean it as one piece anyway. Okay. Normally is. Right, so there you go, that's the stripping down process. Now the cleaning bit. Oh, it's gonna take me ages. Now, I don't think there's any point in me filming me cleaning the carburetor itself. All that will do is send you to sleep and either that or you'll migrate off and go and watch Mighty Car Mods or Erico or um, Eric the Car Guy or Ivan or somebody else. Um, so I won't film it for you. But um, the weapon of choice for this particular carb clean and they're not a sponsor, I just found it on my shelf, is the Gulf Western Oil Carburetor and Throttle Body Cleaner. And it says it's professional series, which means it must be really, really good. Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll give it a go. See you shortly, crew. Look at all that grime that came out. Absolutely horrific. But I think we got there. Well, about... Oh, I don't know, 45 minutes later, here we are. My hands are now a very different colour. That, um, that carbon, sorry, Australian carby, sorry, carburetor and throttle body cleaner. Pretty good stuff, actually. Uh, but you really don't want to get it on a cut like that one there because it stings like a banshee. 
really does. I would really recommend that you wear gloves when using this kind of stuff. It probably says that on the back. Uh, I did wear eye protection because, I, you know, it smelled really, really strong stuff. So, you know, that's usually... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Safety and first aid directions. Avoid contact with the skin and eyes. And avoid breathing the, <laughs> breathing the vapors. You've got to wear a rep respirator with it. Yeah, it is, it is pretty strong gear. Be fair. Wear protective clothing, gloves, eye and face protection. Oops. Okay, so if you are going to use this stuff, don't do what I did. And make sure you wear all the correct PPE. Certainly a pair of glasses, pair of gloves. And, um, you know, stay safe because it really is evil stuff. It does a good job though. Right, let's get this car put back together. Right, so a multitude of tools used, but nothing in, nothing of any particular value. Used a little uh, wire brush. I uh, used a paintbrush, because I've lost my toothbrush. I'm not using the one that's in the house. And um, that's about it, really, I suppose. A little flat screwdriver. Bit of roll, just to, you know, chase. This is a really good technique, actually, to chase the... You've got your cleaner in the, you know, the bit you're cleaning. And you put that in and you basically just chase it around with a flat blade screwdriver and it actually helps you to get right into all the corners and get uh, get all the crap out really really good now of course the whole thing's been blown out with the airline but it's always good to check all the orifices all the drillings that are in the car we've got these two here look so you can just put some kind of spray this is just brake cleaner and you can spray it now you see it's clear and that one Clear. It's, it's just a bit rudimentary, but it's, you get the idea, don't you? There we go. Ooh. Oh my word! My pipe's just blown off. Stick that back on there again. Right. So then again, with these ones, you can do the same things. So that's going to come out around here somewhere. There we go. And then we've got the two sort of jets, the main jets. So you'll see those spray down there. Look. I mean, that's one. Two, and it blew the pipe off again. Yes, heat shrink's not the best way of joining pipes together, is it, Andy? Okay, so I think we've covered everything. You've got the idea. Make sure that all the drillings are clear. I have blown them out with the airline. I'll do that again now, just to get the last of the brake cleaner out. So brace yourself. Here we go. Are you ready? Now there is also another drilling just there. Let me sure that that one's clear. Which it is. Cool. Okay, I think we're good enough. This is only a preliminary, don't forget. It's not an in-depth study on how to clean a carburetor up. Okay, that will come one day. Right, we've got, first of all, the float. So that, that's the little float valve. That sits on this little groove. Just under there. I'm going to offer that in. Oh, I didn't clean the pivot pin. Okay. Okay. That, so it just sits in there like that, and the pivot pin will go through. There we go. Look. Now, be very, very careful when doing the pivot pin, because I've had so many people email me to say, "Oh, I was tapping the pivot pin out, and one of these broke off. What do I do?" Well, you go and find another carburetor is what you're going to do because you just wrecked it. Um, pivot pins shouldn't be tight. Some of them have a little knurled end on them, which, which locks into one of the posts. Be sure to take it out the correct way. Don't try and force the knurl bit all the way through because you will break off the post. This one is just a, a, a you know, straight section. Comes out nice and easily. Now, the idle jet, this one here, was an absolute pig. It was absolutely block solid. Took me ages to get it clear. It is now clear. Uh, how can I demonstrate that to you? Maybe. God, here we go. All right. It was blocked up this end. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We'll give it a go. Way! Hang on, we'll try it without the pipe. You ready? Yeah, okay, so you saw 
some brake cleaner come out the far end. Don't want to go mad because it might go on the camera. Where's my airline? You might see the remnants blast out, so I don't know. Another way to do it is like that, so it seals it all off. Is it going to blow the tissue out of the way? It is. It is clear. Obviously the idle jets only have a little tiny, tiny, tiny hole in them. So it's very difficult to show you on camera, but it is now clear and it was definitely blocked. No doubt about that. So this thing would never have idled as it was. All right, we'll stick him back in there. Right, now for the main emulsion tube. Obviously that's clear. You can see that that's clear down there, look. There you go, and I've cleared all these little, some of these were blocked as well, they're all clear. I'll stick him in there. Right, 7mm spanner, which has got all the green corrosion still on it, look. Oh dear. Just nip it up, don't go mad. Now the main jet wasn't blocked. In fact, there's still a little bit of green crusties in there, so I'll give that a bit of a clean. Just to make sure we get rid of it all. Sorry, I said I wouldn't show you any cleaning, but I did, and I am. And all this stuff was soaked for some time before I can get them to be cleaned out. There we go, that'll do for now, grommets. Now, one thing I do want to get is what's called an ultrasonic cleaner for carburetors. I don't have one, never had one, used one at work, never had one at home. Really do need to get one because that kind of thing is brilliant, absolutely brilliant for cleaning out cabs. But for a video, it's useless because it doesn't show anybody anything. It's like putting it into a cardboard box and it magically coming out clean. Now, one thing to check is that this O-ring seal still sits proud to the casting. And it does, actually, on this one, which is amazing. So it should still seal. Uh, I will, however, be getting a carb recon kit for this bike prior to it going out on its big adventure. Uh, its big adventure being it's going to do the posty bike run. That's the plan, anyway, here in New Zealand. Whenever that is. And whenever I get it fixed. back on the road gotta get it registered that's a palaver in itself right second screw now I haven't cleaned the screws up I haven't got all day and it's all going to come apart again at some point anyway so it's not an issue hey Gromit what's going on here oh look at that we have a cross thread that's not good is it there we go See, it's very easily done to damage components, so take your time. And those little threads, they're very easily damaged, especially the aluminium casting. The, the, the screw's irrelevant, that can be replaced, but, you know. Okay, right, well, I reckon we can get this back on the bike. Right, look at that. That surface there is a little tiny bit of a clean, a bit of brake cleaner. There we go. Now, that went on that way. Let's just give that a bit of a clean as well. It's amazing where the dirt gets, to be honest. And I will be getting a new O-ring, but this one does look like it's gonna survive this particular fitment, hopefully. All right, said Fred. So we've got this little heat insulator that goes on and there's obviously an o-ring there and, and again check your o-rings are proud these are both proud so they should work you're going to offer that in fact hang on let's just try and do this a different way let's try and get that down there first because that's how it came out and then we can slot the insulator in can't we there we go right get that round push it back Get the insulator in there. 
See when we wiggle that screw, it might bolt through. There we go. Try not to get too much dirt. <laughs> God, there's dirt everywhere. Is it? Where's the other bolt gone? Where's the bolt? Where's this? Ah, oh, hang on. It had a thing on it. That's it. That's the one. Right. So that goes in there. Let's try and get that one in first. If we can. That'll make it easier to get the other one in. It'll sort of get us on the correct distance. Where are you? There we are. Right, now we can give this one a go. There we are. Excellent stuff. Might be easier to do the side, Andy, or a slightly shorter extension there. Bear with me. Give that a go. Oh, I don't like that at all. There we go. Good stuff. Right, let's do a bit more of this side. I don't want to overcook it. Everything on this bike is quite small, so. There we go. Super job. Right, one choke mechanism. Okay, let's get that back on there again. Now remember, this is just getting the bike running. There'll be all sorts of stuff to do on this bike further down the line, which will include a full cal uh, carb rebuild. But that's not what we're doing today. I want to find out whether this engine actually runs or not. This isn't specifically a carburetor video. It's a get going video. And they're always the best. Huh. Well, it might be not get going video. We don't know yet, do we? Okay, now you see we've got the um, this little screw here is the idle adjustment and that works against the ramp on the side of your slider. So make sure you put it down this way. It should key in to just a little little br brass lug. There we go, look. On the other side. Very important you get that the right way around because if it does start up and you've got it the wrong way around, it will rev its nuts off and probably cause damage to the engine to be fair. Right, again, don't go mad with that. Doesn't need to be super tight. Okay, pliers. Now, we had a couple of pipes. This being one of them. This is actually a bit damaged. So I'm going to cut that back, I think. Just a couple of mil, just to get rid of that split. It's only a breather, well, an overflow pipe, to be fair. So shouldn't really cause any harm. There we go. I think we've still got enough. There we go. Right. Don't even need to put that back on really for this particular test, but you know, probably will. Probably not. I don't know yet. See how easy it goes on. Now we'll leave it off. Looks a bit tight. Okay, fuel lines still wibbling, wobbling a bit, a bit dribbly. So we'll top one first. There we go, and then the bottom one. So we discover that the top one I think is reserve. It could be wrong. I think it's reserve, and then the bottom one is the normal on feed, which doesn't want to go on. There we go. When you're doing that kind of stuff with your pliers, make sure they're not sharp. These aren't too bad. And again, I think we can leave those off for now. I think they're not going to ride the bike anyway, so that should be all right. Then we had that breather underneath, didn't we? Which 
looks extremely difficult to get back on again, if not impossible. But you're on the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, so the impossible is nothing. Putting the clip on would be, but that'll do. <sighs> you know what? Last thing, I've got to check the air filter, and I think the air filter will be behind here. Or even in there actually looking at that okay so maybe actually we could just run it no we shouldn't do that we shouldn't run it without an air filter should we let's go and find the air filter I reckon it's in here it's got a single nut so I think that end comes off like I say I've not got a manual for this bike yet that's next week's job let's undo that could be wrong. Chances are, if it's been used as a posty bike, these things would be relatively easy to maintain. And things should be of good access. That should be part of the design brief. So hopefully Honda's listened. It has got a bit of a crack in it, to be fair. Right, we've got another bit of rubber to take off up here. So we'll just spray those. Oh, look at that. It is a bit rusty. But it is coming undone. Just that's about as far as I can go. Completely cleaning up. That's the problem when you draw the rust into the threads. You get so far and then they start to tighten up. Like that one is. That's why it's always a good idea to wire brush them. Oh yeah. Oh spider. Ooh. Ew, look at that. That's not ideal, is it? That's a lot of mud and crap and stuff. And spiders and things. I like spiders. That needs to go clean. And is that a 10? It is a 10. Jeez. Surely that's got to undo to get the filter out. You would think. Oh, there we go, look. Oh, the seal's about to disappear. Right, let's get rid of that spacer. Short thread to the filter side. And look at the size of that air filter. That's massive. Look at the dirt on it. That thing was never going to run like that. That's horrendous. Now what? Well, needs to be cleaned. Okay, I'm going to take this whole housing off and give this a wash out, I think. So we've got a 10mm bolt up there. And then, I've got one down here as well. And then we can remove it. What a mess! Well, that's a bit tight to get in, isn't it? What's going on there? A rock! There's a rock in the way. What the hell? Right, that's one. Now for the other one. Okay, there's me spray. This looks decidedly dodgy. Oh, it's not part of the clamp. Clamp separate. If in doubt, give it a spray. That's what we say, isn't it? Well, oh, that's not going to fit. That's not ideal. I think we'll take that off with this and sort the whole thing out. Give it all a good clean. I know, I know. We didn't have to do that up, but we didn't know at the time. Okay. Hold your breath. Oh, it's bent, look. Somebody bent it. Bugger. Okay, that should now come back off the cab. Oh, it's full of water. What the hell? Oh, 
Well, lucky that didn't make it as far as the car, but has it gone into the engine? We don't know. Hey, that's not good. Bugger, there is a risk that some of that water that's been making it into the air filter housing has made it into the engine. We don't know. What I do know is the top of the exhaust, where it goes into the engine, where it connects, has completely rusted out. Now, is that because water's been flowing from the air filter, from the air filter housing through the carb, down into the cylinder, out through the exhaust valve, and then corroding away the exhaust? I sincerely hope not. If that's the case, this bike will never run. Well, it won't in its current form. It will when I fix it. But only one thing to do now, and that's clean up that really manky air filter. I mean, come on. Seriously, people, that is horrendous. These are all the parts are there. And inside here, look, look at all the mud. I mean, what have they been using the bike for? It's not ideal, is it? Look at that. Oh well, easy to clean. Right, I'm going to have a coffee, get that cleaned up, and then we can fit it back on the bike. Then, a bit of fresh fuel in the tank. Check the fuel's getting to the carb, then we can see if it starts. Can't wait. See you shortly, crew. I'm back. Just thought I'd mention, normally I would use petrol. Just, you know, whatever petrol's kicking around to clean old air filters. But I don't have a spare one. And of course, I'm making a video, so I don't want to risk damaging this one. So, I've dug out an old can of air filter cleaner. This is made by, oh golly, who is it? Maxima Racing Oils, there look, had this for years, I only use it for, you know, emergencies to be honest, we'll give it a go, see what happens, hopefully that filter won't disintegrate, so we can take the little rubber seal off the back, and this should really just slide off, hopefully it's not uh, going to destroy itself in the process, oh look at the state of that, I think we might be hiding to nothing here, but we'll give it a go. Is that just mud coming off, or is that actually the foam? I think it's the foam. <laughs> we'll be getting a new one of these. For sure. Where's my screwdriver? So you can just get that over the lip. Full of water. Ew, it's not good. It's not good at all, is it? Look at the state. I think I mean, we could be hiding into nothing here. I'll give it a go. I think it's too far gone, people. See the water oozing out of it. Well, we're off. Jeez. It is made of two types of foam. Hopefully it's just the outer that's falling apart. It might still be okay for this job. It's almost a waste of cleaner on it, to be honest, but we'll, we'll see. I think if we'd used petrol, it definitely would have fallen apart. Completely. Oh, that's Oh, lovely. Way. Easy, Tiger. God, strong 
wrong stuff is this? Lovely. All right, we'll give it one more. It is coming a bit cleaner, I must admit. <laughs> Slippy can. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, that should evaporate away. That's the state of it. Better than nothing. And if we didn't if we didn't have this, it would be nothing. Because I have no spares for this bike yet. It only picked it up last week. Okay, we'll leave that to dry. And once it's dry, we'll put a bit of filter oil on it, which is what it needs, and then we can refit it. Hopefully, it'll go back together in one piece. That's only the top, the top layer that's ripped there. So, as you can see, there's a different, different layer inside. So I think we'll be okay. Remember, it's only an initial start, so we're doing a pretty good job. Right, I need to clean all the rest of the stuff, including these casings. Oh my God. Where do you start? Right. Hmm. Petrol. I think we'll take these rubbers off. Okay. Okay. <sighs> that was the one. See how rusted up that um, these bands are. Look. So they need a good wire brush and freeing off as well. I've got quite a lot of work ahead of me. Now, I'm just working my way through doing these, you know, these uh, these bands that hold everything together. And um, it's been no easy task, to be honest. They have been extremely rusty. But I think these two, we are good to go. Yep, that one's all right. Let's try this one. Now, I haven't got the JIS bits, unfortunately. I've only got the screwdrivers. That's something else that's on my wish list. So I've got to be super careful to round the heads up. But that one's all right. So we've done those two. Now we've got this one to do. Hmm, okay. Where's my screwdriver? Let's see what kind of nick that's in. I mean, I can always replace the screws, if need be. This one's actually all right. Pretty good. So I can get the screw out of that. We can straighten the clamp up. You see how it's it's got slightly bent? It is a bit corroded. Where's my wire brush? I've I've moved to the steel wire brush for a bit more meat, you know, a bit more attackiness. And you know, who knows? If they're still available, I might order some new ones, I think, while we still can. Yeah, get the farm out. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Okay, and now for the threads. Oh, geez. It's quite a small bolt, this one. But if, yeah, I've just spent about, about 15 minutes doing those first two, just slowly cleaning up the threads. I'm going to run a die, I think, down the threads as well, just to make sure I get all the last of the rubbish out. Pretty sure they should be available still. It's not that old a bike, to be fair. They still sold them until recently. I say recently, the last few years. Okay. Let's 
see how that's going to work. Now, let me take you over to the vise, and I'll show you what I've been doing. Right, hopefully the camera's going to keep focus. So I was putting the, the nut side of the clamp just gingerly in the vise like that. A bit of a spray. And then use my little screwdriver just to whiz in the screw and whiz it back out. Now this one's obviously all right, but the other two were an absolute pig act to keep stopping and using the wire brush on the threads just to keep, keep getting the rust out. And eventually I can get the screw actually, you know, out of the nut completely. So that was my technique. I thought it was pretty good. Right, one more to go. Now this one is definitely the worst of them all. It's extremely rusty. Hey, we'll give it a go. We've got the magic ice. So if anything's going to do anything, we'll do it. It'll be this one. Let's see if we can get a bit of a bit of a wire brush in there first. If I can get the bolt out, I can always replace the bolt. I've got plenty of plenty of new screws to go in. I can always drill the head off if need be. But I need to get this thing turning first because the nut's a captive nut. Now this one we haven't even attempted to undo because it was so bad and it's actually quite hard to get to on the bike. So we'll see. Three out of four so far. Oh my word. Is there even a head there? Can we even get into it? It's not looking good people. Looking about as bad as the air filter is. There's not a lot of purchase. Wow. The other option is to put some mole grips on this end of the threads, get it to start moving, and then just just basically break that off. Just give it a wiggle and it'll snap off. Because it's such a small screw, but I'd like to pursue this one if possible. If we can get a bit more rust out, then maybe, just maybe, we'll get enough grip on that head. Don't know. Sorry, camera. Jeez. Wow. That is very, very rusty. Yeah. Okay. More grips. The only part we need to retain is the actual clamp itself. Like I say, the bolt. Oh, the bolt can go in the bin. Look at this one. It will be going in the bin. Right. Let's clamp that on there. See if we can get it to turn that way. You can see it's flexing the bolt. The head's not actually moving. So that will snap off. Unfortunately. Can we do both? A bit of torque from both sides. I don't know. This is where you need tool girls here to give me a hand. Nah. No. I don't think we can get it off. Let's just get rid of that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh dear. Do we have to get it off with the clamp still tight? I don't know. Maybe we're going to have to leave that one in situ and just clean the whole thing together. And I'll have to order a new clamp. I think. I can always drill the head off, drill out the old bolt, and try and re tap that captive nut. But to be fair, the whole clamp is in a pretty bad state. It's lost really some of its strength anyway. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll just leave that alone for now because it is only a start up. And we'll get it, oh God, we'll get everything cleaned out. 
Where's that seal? Let's get that seal out while we're here because we don't want that to be reacting with petrol. There we go. Right, we'll save that because that probably will get destroyed with the petrol. Okay. More cleaning to do. Now, things haven't quite gone to plan. We seem to have more bits now than what we started with, and there's been some collateral damage. The, uh, the airbox body that's mounted via this mounting and via, oh dear, this mounting here, which isn't there anymore, well, it's broken off. And not only that, it's broken again. It's obviously incredibly brittle. There you go, look. So, I thought what we could do, because it needs to be on there, otherwise the whole thing's going to rattle, we could put the forked super glue to the test. What do you reckon, Jared? Reckon it's going to work? I think it might. I've used it for a couple of things, and it's been really good so far, so let's give it a go. Right, first job, I think we need to just roughen up the contact uh, surfaces first. No easy task because it's broken in quite a convoluted kind of a way, but that might give it more grip because it's more surface area. So I don't know really the best way of doing this. We've got the little Dremel. This is where things will all go flying. Look there, it's just in my eye actually. Right here I don't want to take away too much material because obviously we need that, jeez, we need that contact patch. I think it's time for some eye protection, don't you? <laughs> it's <looks> pretty dodgy. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. Let's give it another go. I think less speed is better. Alright. So I do just want to rough up the surface. Without taking too much material off. Make sure it's clean obviously as well. well if we're not far off on that one. Okay. Now we've got two bits in here, so we'll try and get down that gap. Way easy tiger. Oh, okay, it's going to fall off altogether now. obviously been on the way out for a while. I haven't broken this today. It just fell off in my hands. There's actually another crack under there, look. This might prove to be quite difficult to, to perform a decent fix. I'm sure we'll work something out. Should have been a dentist really, shouldn't I? <laughs> okay. Well, we're about there. Seems a strange kind of video, this one, doesn't it? Getting a bike running, gluing something. Probably my fingers actually. Right, let's give this a go. Where do you start? I think we should stick the big bit on first. <clears throat> okay. Is it going to work or does it, do I need to clean it out? Jeez. Uh, there we go. 
we have flow. Flow is good. Right, that's that bit. Let's stick some on here. Because you've got to put it on both surfaces. Super glue, I believe. Usually works better that way. Right. Now, being super glue, the sheer nature of super glue is it shouldn't take very long to set once it's put in place. So, if we can get it in position, oh, there we go. Look, right. I am providing a clamping force. Can you tell? How long does it take? 30 seconds? A minute? Are you counting or am I? What are we up to there? I don't know. 47, 48, 49, 50. A bit longer. The suspense will kill you, won't it? Oh, my finger was nearly stuck. Okay, that's that bit on. <clears throat> right. We've still got some super glue on that bit. We just need some on this little bit now. Jeez. That's how you're supposed to use it, Mr. Young. It's like a little bellows at the end. It's very good, actually. Right. Stand it up, stand it up. Okay. So that should go on here. Can you see? You can. That should go on here like, like that. I'm applying another clamping force. Can you tell? You're going to count to 30 seconds. I think we're halfway. Fantastic. Nearly stuck my thumb to it again. <clears throat> well, that's what it should look like. And you can tell it's actually got, you know, there's a bit of force going on there, isn't there? Wow, we had a lot of glue running out of there, didn't we? Jeez. Oh well, good job, Forge. Proof will be in the pudding. Ugh, safety third. Isn't that what Eric says? <clears throat> okay, so I'm a bit dubious about this. Hopefully it's going to work. I have every confidence in, in Jared's stuff. Forch, should I say. Because it's very good quality gear. But we're going to give that a little bit longer to set. I wonder what the instructions say. <laughs> Let's go read the instructions. <clears throat> what does it say? Does it say anything on here? No. God. Uh... Warning. Oh, hang on, it's got a little pull tab thing. Oh, I'm pulling all of it, hang on. Bear with me, my eyesight's not so good these days. There we go. Right, to camera, Mr. Young, to camera. Look at that. Oh my word. Right, hang on then. For super fast bonding of rubber, plastic, metal, ceramic, sorry, ceramics, leather, etc. Clean surfaces prior to bonding. Apply a thin layer hmm, <laughs> of adhesive to one surface. Bugger. To one surface. You should always read the instructions, shouldn't you? To one surface and join surfaces together, maintaining sufficient pressure for. Oh, that's it. For professional use only. It must be me then. <laughs> Empty cartridge completely uh, prior, to, uh, prior to commercial disposal. Okay, so it doesn't say how long it takes to bond. But we took about 30 seconds and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, but I made an error. Only apply it to one surface, not both, like I did. 
<clears throat> all I can say is it's probably giving it double strength. Nah, that won't be the case. So it seems to be hanging in there. We'll leave it a bit longer. <clears throat> in the meantime, oh, I've cleaned it all out by the way. Look at that. It's like a new one. Apart from the clamp. So we'll leave that for a little bit longer. I did notice as well there is which is rather unfortunate, but it is upstream of the air filter. There is a crack here, look, in this casing. So that will need to be filled. Or basically, I can just grind that out with the with the Dremel, and I could use uh, some like um, epoxy type adhesive to fill that from both sides. Because I really don't want to spend too much on this. That's interesting. This part. There's a little grid in there, look, you see that? This part was made in December 2007. And it's no, that's the part number there, look, if you want one. And it's known as LID Air Cleaner, says Mr. Honda. Good job. Right. Okay. So the next job now uh, is to oil up the air filter element. Oh, it still stinks. I might give it a blast out with the airline first. Yes, it's still wet. Okay, back in a second. Air filter element is done. Super sticky now. Uh, I did wring out most of the oil. I didn't want too much on it. But what I did notice, and I've cleaned it up ready for you, is on the end here, look, this end that goes into the air box, there should be this grommet. And that should be glued on there. Now, obviously, when we took it apart, it was loose. So I've cleaned all the glue off, and given it a good break, clean down. So it's a nice, clean surface. So we'll try some of that super glue on there as well. See if that fixes that problem. Here we go. Oh, and only apply the super glue onto one surface, not both. Yeah. Right, said Fred. Let's put the super glue on there. And then we'll offer the little rubber piece in, in position. So. It's going to sit like that. Oh, it's quite large, isn't it? It's a lot bigger than it needs to be. Which way around does it go? Does it go that way around? I don't know. Golly, and he's not prepared at all. I think. Yes. I think it goes that way around. And then inside it slips over a little plastic piece right down the bottom, if you can see that. Right, I could be wrong. If I am, I've glued it on the wrong place. Or in the wrong orientation, but I think it goes that way. In which case, the glue has to only be on the, the base. All right, well here goes. Jeez, no eye protection this time around. It's quite, it can be quite forceful to get it out, which is good. Because that way, you don't put too much on. Wee. Jared's watching this now going, Andy, you're putting too much on. Right, there we go, look. I'm quite sure that that will be ample. I'll just close that again before it squidges it all out. Okay. Here goes. Are you going to count 30 seconds this time? Or should we just do some magic? Maybe I'll just edit it. So you don't have to watch this. It won't be in the video. But then again, it might be because I might forget. It does need to be glued on because otherwise, how the hell are you going to get it down there? It's a long, quite a long tube. Look at that, it's on, brilliant. Good job, Forge. Hopefully I've not got super glue on the camera. Right, I think we're ready for reassembly. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna fix this bit just yet, that crack, that will get done on the main strip down. This is just a get running video. It's turned into quite a palaver, to be honest. Okay, so first job is let's go and refit this bit back on the bike. Well, here it goes. I think a bit of silicon spray inside there first, just to get it on the carb. 
nice and easily. on let's find some bolts right so we've got two bolts we've got that one there that's right and that was the long one wasn't it that was bent so let's stick the lock oh no hang on no that was that one there we go right so we'll pop that in there oh jeez Not ideal with it being bent. There we go. It's wobbling its way around. Is it gonna run? I don't know. Right, before we tighten that up, let's just get this one in position. Way come back. that glue's going to hold. It might not. Just leave that loose for now. Okay, the other one's tight. It catches on here. It's not that easy to get in. Maybe I'll... Let's get in there with a spanner. Just bear with me, it could take a little bit longer. A bit more feel with a spanner as well. Really could do with an extra mount, couldn't it, really? There's a lot hanging off this back mounting. That'll do for now, Gromit. Oh, yes. Good stuff. Okay, let's do up this clamp. I think the clamp actually might be the wrong way around, but it'll do for now. I can always fix that later. Where's my screwdriver? There we go. That's it. Doesn't need to be super tight. Right, and now for the air filter element, what's left of it, that should just slide down there. Oh yes, and it was a short end into there. Yes, there we go. We'll just nip that up. Cool. Glue is holding out really well, actually. I know I should have cleaned that, shouldn't I? Where's my? Just get a bit of break. There's always something you don't clean, isn't there? There you go. It's most of it off. I mean, the main thing is it's upstream of the air filters. It's not really a problem. It's a billion times better than it was. There we go. All right, let's give those threads a bit of a clean out. Oh, this wire brush, incidentally, is made by um, U N I O N Union, and I think it's Italian. But I'm not entirely sure. Right, now we've got that seal to fit, that's next. Okay, now how did it go? Don't know, I think it went that way around. A bit dubious. 
is it different in section? It's not. It's the same all the way around. So let's look for a tight corner on it. Yeah, I would say that that's that corner there. There we go. Right, we'll just stuff him in there, look. Could have fitted that before and totally forgot. Little flat screwdriver. You can use that as a prodding device. Can you see? I think you can't see there, can you? Hang on. There you go. Now you can probably see. And you can always put a little bit of grease on these seals just to help them to hold them in place. He says, popping it back out again. Okay, it's in. Now for the broken end piece. There we go. Right. One washer, one nut. Excellent. Now, we do still have this bit to go back on, which fits in there. I'm not going to fit it. And the reason for that is looking up there in this sort of steel chamber that's part of the rear rack, it's full of spiders and other debris. And if we do, it's going to suck all of that straight onto that clean air filter. So to, obviously I'll be taking the rack off at some point. At that point, I can clean all that out. And then when I refit the rack, I can pop this back in rather than trying to force it in now as well. I don't want to risk breaking that, uh, that glue while it's still curing. You know what? We can try and start it. Woohoo! Yes, I heard you. It needs petrol, Andy. It does. Let me chuck some fresh fuel petrol in the fuel tank and then we'll give it a go. Can't wait. Ooh, the fuel tank's a bit rusty. Okay. Oh, God. Say when. Tell me if you see a leak. Well, that should be enough, I reckon. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, yes, about half full. Got a Wellington on that. Right, hey guys. Now we've got on up there, that's hard to read, but that's on. This is off and that must be reserve. And the arrow points towards that way at the moment. So we'll do reserve, which is that one. So what we're looking for now is, you know, is the carb gonna overflow? Have the floats either stuck or has the float valve not seated correctly? Hmm, well, if there is an overflow, it's going to come out of this pipe. Can you see any fuel? No, me neither. That's good news. Okay, we'll stick him back down there for now. In fact, we'll put him away from the exhaust because it's going to make lots and lots of noise if it does start up and probably a few flames. Okay, this is the choke. We'll turn Mr. Choke to on. So that's off, middle, and on. Okay, 
Let's lower the hoist. Ah, look, I've just spotted the chain. Look at the state of this chain. It's obviously been cut to allow the bike to be pushed around. And because the battery is completely shot, I can't tell if the bike's in neutral. If we start the bike up in gear, it's going to try and pull that chain in. And given all the frozen links in it, it could cause damage to the engine casing. I've got to get that chain out before we can start the bike. I've failed. I cannot get the chain off. It's going to involve taking the whole of this casing off here. It's all one piece, which exposes the flywheel. That's oil immersed, so all the oil's going to come out. So I'm going to put a mark on, on this link here. I'm going to kick it over with the ignition turned off, and we'll see if it's in drive. I've checked online, and basically it's in neutral when it's all the way down. So hopefully we'll be in neutral. Oh, it's got a bit of compression and it hasn't moved and the gears are all the way down so it should be a neutral I could always I suppose put a if I had a 6 volt battery I could put it on and see if the neutral light comes on I could also tap into the wiring harness somewhere and see if the neutral switch is grounded I just want to get it going here we go Right, ignition on. I have no idea if it's going to start. Let me know. Right, run switch is in the run position. Straddle the bike. It's extremely dangerous. Oh, oh, I need some purchase. Okay, here it goes. In fact, hang on. Let's do it from this side. Oh, just do it now. Turn now. Let me get rid of that stand. Hang on. Well. Choke is on. Not trying, is it? Oh, 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 on full throttle. Okay. 
some lights work. Very, very happy indeed actually. I wasn't too sure. It was quite a bit well, I was quite a bit wrong, but with the carb as it was, it was never gonna go. Alright, let's stick it back up in the air just so we get it in the shot. is it really is so happy with that yes we've got a minor exhaust leak but let's not worry too much about that we can fix that later on the important thing is it does actually run obviously i can't take it for a test drive because the chain's completely screwed and it's going to be a major task to extract it okay let's turn it off let's give it a rest in the engine again how long was that sat in a barn and never used many many years by the looks of it well if you've got a ct110 that's been stuck in a barn for a long time then this video might help you to get it going again it does mean because there appears to be no serious problems with the engine and the workshop isn't full of smoke so it's not an oil burner and we could tell that from the spark plug anyway but you know running it is the proof of the pudding it looks like I've got a lot of work ahead of me now to get this bike road fit to do the posty run here in New Zealand. That's not delivering letters, that's a mission with loads of other posty bikes across New Zealand. That would be fun. Okay crew, well if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You can ring the bell, sorry it's a bit fuming in here. You can ring the bell and our friends at YouTube will flick you a notification through as and when I upload any more videos. And you can guarantee in the future, not straight away, because I've got other projects going on, there'll be lots more videos on the infamous Honda CT110 Posty bike. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also email me directly, and my email address is in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon or PayPal. Your choice and any donations received are very, you know, very, we're very grateful for anything that's sent through. Even a dollar goes a long way to doing projects just like this. Okay, crew. Well, until next time, thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out. Ha <laughs> <laughs>